Hey everybody, welcome back. We have a very special video in store today. We are going to be making a quantum dot uh, using just Vesta, no outside codes. Um, so completely free uh, using just Vesta. And we are going to be making a copper quantum dot uh, specifically. I've been working with copper in the past couple of videos, so I have its unit cell on hand. And uh, it's a little long-winded process. Uh, it's not in it's not very straightforward, uh, but you know it uses just Vesta, so it's completely free, and you can do this at home. So without further ado, let's get going. So the first thing I'm going to do is open up my copper unit cell. You might remember this from some previous videos. It's just this sort of standard cubic unit cell. So the first thing we need to do is well let me give you the overview of what's going to happen so we are going to expand the unit cell of copper and then we are going to cut from the center a quantum dot of a particular radius okay so when you expand this unit cell you can do it in two ways you can either do it by the boundary method for example if i expand it four unit cells in every dimension you can see my i have a quote unquote larger structure, but this is not a supercell. It's not a supercell because I did not change the actual size of the unit cell vectors. This is very important. Okay, If you want to change the actual size of the unit cell vectors, what you have to do is you have to go to Edit, Edit Data, Unit Cell, Transform. Now you're going to actually transform the unit cell vectors. In here we do it, our transformation is simply a magnification. Also, as a side comment, I just want to tell everybody that my microphone that I usually use hasn't been working, so I have to speak directly into the laptop, and you might hear my laptop's fan going uh, in the background, especially later when we have a slightly computationally intensive part. So I press OK, yes, OK, apply. All right, so now we have a supercell. So from here, we are going to carve our quantum dot. And so we need to select the center atom. And what we're going to do is when we select the center atom, we're going to change its identity. We're going to draw bonds of a particular length to that center atom, and then cut out all the atoms that don't have the bonds to them. So basically, like for example, this corner atom is atom one, uh, if we wanted to change the identity of atom 1, we can go to Edit, Edit Data, Structure Parameters. Then we go come to atom 1 and basically just change its identity. Now you can see here that we only have four atoms in our system. And this is because Vesta has not yet registered that we've made a supercell. And it won't do that until we save it. So in a lot of videos, you see me saving things and reopening things. This is why. So to save this, we go to File, Export Data. We're going to export it as a VASP. And I'm going to call it 4x4x4 uh, because we have a supercell now. So this file will pertain strictly to my unit cell. We press Save. Cartesian coordinates. OK. So now I'm going to press Control W to get rid of this, and Control O to open up our supercell. So now you can see there's a lot of atoms registered. And in particular, let's check out our center atom. It happens to be atom number 43. <clears throat> okay, so what we need to do now is we need to change the identity of this atom. Excuse me, I need to take a drink. Okay, so we do this again by going to Edit, Edit Data, Structure Parameters, and we go down to Atom 43, and we're going to change this copper to a nitrogen, just any atom, it doesn't matter, and our label will be Nitrogen 1, since it's our first nitrogen atom. Let me press Apply. Okay. So you can see here we have a nitrogen atom. 
Now what we need to do is we need to draw bonds from the copper atoms to this nitrogen atom, and these bonds will be the radius of our quantum dot. So here's what I mean. To do this, we go to Edit, Bonds, New. Let's expand this slightly. And we're going to search the atoms bonded to A1. And A1 will be our nitrogen atom. And now what we're going to do is, this is important, search additional atoms if A1 is included in the boundary. So then what we do is we're going to set our maximum length, uh, which if we want to have a quantum dot, let's say of 2 nanometers, then we want this maximum length to be 10, because this corresponds to the radius, and we're in unit angstrom. So you can see the unit is angstrom, and 10 angstroms is a nanometer. So if we want to make, let's say, a two nanometer or two nanometer in diameter copper quantum dot, then we should set this to 10. If we wanted to make a one nanometer copper quantum dot, we should set this to five. So let's just for now set this to five, press apply, and you can see that we now have something that looks like this. Um, and then basically you would just carve around this. Uh, what I'm going to do is set this to 10 because, you know, why not? Let's, let's make it a little larger. Press apply. So now this is actually going to take some time. Um, you'll most definitely hear my fan, my computer fan going now. The reason is because it's searching outside of the unit cell. And so it's basically like figuring out what atoms should be there. Um, so this, this will take some time. Don't be surprised if it takes a minute or two, but we can, you know, just chit chat in the meantime. So what's going to happen is we'll eventually get our new atoms. Basically these bonds here will extend outside of the unit cell. And we're then going to carve around them. Okay, looks like we're good. Now let's select OK. Oh, looks like it's still going a little bit. Um, but yeah, you can see here, you can really see the radius of your quantum dot. And this actually, this plane here is your 111 plane. So looks like we still have some computation going on. We, we could have just stuck with a one nanometer quantum dot, but you know, why not, why not go big right now? It also makes it easier to chop off stuff the less you have to chop off. I guess you have to wait. Anyways, so, um, okay, never mind. So here we are. So now what we're going to do is we're going to chop off all the atoms that don't have bonds to them. You can try going into polyhedral mode, which sometimes works. And you can see here now that we basically have the polyhedral of our quantum dot. And what's really interesting is like this surface here is the is the native 001 plane, whereas this plane here, interestingly enough, is the 111 plane. So anything now that is not in this polyhedral, we will cut off. Okay, so then we just simply rotate. And we're gonna probably be doing a lot of rotating. So just bear with me, please. Okay, looks like we're good. Oh, one more. Let's just keep going around. Okay, so we're good in the C. Now let's hit B. Rotate around. We look okay. Let's hit A. Rotate around. So it looks like we're good. So now what we need to do is we need to save this as an XYZ file. Do not save it as a VASP. So export data, and we're going to make this copper two nanometer quantum dot, okay? And save it as an XYZ. Save, 
No. Now we're going to open it with Control O. So here we go. We basically have our quantum dot now. And the only thing is that this nitrogen atom is a copper atom, so we can change it back. Edit, edit data structure parameters. And recall that was like atom 43 or something. Now it's 54. Make this copper, copper 54, apply. There it is. And there you have it. There is your quantum dot. And it is beautiful and it looks really good. And so you could do this with binary structures, ternary structures, anything you want. Um, so now if we want to add bonds to this, what we can do is first let's check out what the typical bond in the copper would be. So let's go to, here, let me stop moving this on everybody. Let's measure some bond distances here to here, 2.56, here to here, 2.56. Okay, looks like they're sort of all the all the same. So all of the bonds in this copper here are approximately 2.56. So let's go to edit, bonds, new, search atoms bonded to copper. So for every atom bonded to copper, uh, let's search for bonds that are, I don't know, 2.57. Uh, let's not search behind the boundary and press apply. Press OK. Yep, pretty much this is our, our copper crystal. So it's a little different than what we had before. Um, I don't think the planes are as, are as well defined. Um, well, they are, but they're a little more. They have these like intermediate bonds here, which I don't think should be there for visualization purposes. But in any case, um, here is your copper quantum dot. So thank you so much, everybody, for watching. Um, stay tuned. Next time we'll do a binary structure like titanium dioxide. If you have any questions or comments, uh, leave them in the comments section. Thank you.